Hello everyone, uh, so welcome to class 31. So, today we will be looking at, we will be continuing on what we have left off from the previous class. We have started thermodynamics, uh, I mean so the, the, the module of thermodynamics, uh, we have not really gone into thermodynamics yet. Uh, so, we will be looking at equilibrium properties in this module and we will actually uh, you know uh, be able to understand some basic principles by which uh, you know we can say whether a material 1 has a higher uh, you know susceptibility or uh, uh, dielectric constant compared to material 2 and what you know sort of dynamics, what sort of thermodynamics of the material uh, helps you predict uh, these sort of things right. So, so that is the uh, that is the eventual goal right. Uh, uh, so, so first we will look at it from a thermodynamic framework and then uh, later on go to uh, the, the what I call the BAP of thermodynamics which is STATMEC right, so statistical mechanics okay. So, uh, so we have started looking at it, we said all right, so we have conjugate quantities thermodynamics uh, you know starts with actually first law, second law, third law of thermodynamics, but the most important uh, one of the ideas of thermodynamics is we have what are called conjugate quantities. Uh, so, uh, conjugate quantities if one is the cause the other one is the effect. So, we said that uh, we said if E uh, that is the electric field is the cause D which is the displacement is the effect or if I apply voltage I generate charge or if I generate if I apply charge on the plates of capacitor I generate voltage right. And this is you know so, so capacitor as you know is you know you store energy inside a capacitor you are not dissipating energy. So, it is a conservative property. Uh, and so, the, the property that relates E to D is, is a conservative property or it can be explained in the framework of thermodynamics right. So, what is the property that relates E to D uh, linearly uh, we said uh, we wrote this expression and we said that is nothing but your uh, dielectric constant epsilon ij is your dielectric constant. Okay. Uh, or you know if I look at the converse of uh, this effect that is I am applying charge and I am measuring the field that is generated because of the charge, uh, then I have a beta ij which is the inverse uh, dial or uh, you know inverse dielectric constant okay. So, similarly uh, I can apply temperature and I can generate entropy or I can apply uh, you know so, so I can change I can put in some heat into the system that is I can change the entropy of the system. Uh, and I can measure temperature right. So, so, uh, so whichever way you go uh, you know the, the proportionality constant is either Cp by T or T by Cp okay. Uh, and you know so, so we looked at the third corner of my uh, triangle uh, is uh, stress and strain right. So, this is the mechanical part, this is the thermal part and this is the electrical part and the properties of interest there are compliance and uh, uh, you know stiffness okay. So, so this is what we did and we said what are all these equilibrium properties it means that once you slightly disturb the system away from equilibrium this property sort of it is like a spring uh, mass where you uh, you slightly disturb you slightly uh, extend the spring away from its equilibrium and you know you are saying uh, you know how much what is the restoring force for it to come back and the property of the spring which is the k k is the spring constant right determines what this restoring force is right. Similarly, you know you will always have just like spring mass has a potential energy u for various properties thermal properties mechanical properties you can define a thermodynamic potential right. So, thermodynamic free energy which is phi and you know you will always see that the properties of interest are nothing but uh, you know the curvatures of uh, of this phi as a function of uh, uh, you know your uh, uh, one of the cause right. So, so the cause or what is called the reaction coordinate okay. So, uh, uh, so, so this is the more generic you know way of thinking of exactly what you have seen in uh, you know the spring mass system right. So, this is a generic way of you know uh, thinking or let us just say generalization of what we have seen in spring mass system for all the equilibrium properties right. So, there you are just explaining only k which is the spring constant as an equilibrium property, but here uh, all equilibrium properties can be uh, you know seen as you know some sort of uh, curvature near equilibrium 
of a thermodynamic potential. Right. Just like spring constant K which describes how much is the restoring force which describes which determines the magnitude of restoring force is the curvature of uh, is the curvature u versus d at equilibrium. That means, you know, so the spring constant is nothing but dou square u by dou d square, right. So, uh, d or x square, right. So, this is uh, let me just write this as x, okay. So, that is the spring constant, okay. So, that is um, you know or plus or minus of that, right, uh, to make the spring whichever makes the spring constant positive, okay. Uh, so, uh, so, so you, you can extend the uh, you can uh, generalize the uh, discussion of uh, spring mass system to explain any sort of equilibrium property right. K is an equilibrium property right. So, it, it describes the amount of energy stored in the spring right. So, from an energetic perspective it describes how much is the restoring force if I displace it right. Similarly, uh, you know something like dielectric constant describes how much amount of elastic energy is stored in the material or uh, you know if I polarize the material how much is the is the field uh, that is generated to counter restoring field to counter the polarization that is generated that is what epsilon does right and so on and so forth. So, you can you can always take uh, you know uh, a thermal property or a mechanical property or an electrical property and say what it is uh, you know. So, so, say it in terms of what is it restoring, what is the restoring force that it is causing and also what is the energy that it is storing. For example, stress strain the elastic modulus that is that's, that is the, the energy that is being stored uh, you know in a Hookean uh, 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 you know limit is the mechanical energy right. So, in the system right. So, so, uh, so that is the spring mass and uh, you know and so on and so forth ok. Anyway, so, so let us go back to our uh, uh, triangle right. So, I have been drawing the triangle with colors where E, X and T all the all the uh, uh, you know E, X and T are in red color right. So, these properties I have called them intensive quantities right. So, all the intensive quantities I have drawn in red color and all the extensive quantities I have drawn in this maroon or pink color right. So, so let me just uh, do the same thing here again ok. So, all the intensive quantities E, X and T are in red color all the extensive quantities which are their corresponding conjugate quantities are in uh, oh sorry this that is the in, internal uh, the the red triangle is outside the green triangle is inside ok. So, so ok let me correct it. So, I have E I have X I have T ok, but then if I go for this I have D I have small x I have S, S for entropy ok. So, we know what relates E and D. So, those things those properties I have. Uh, so, if I apply E I get D and the relation is through epsilon which is the dielectric constant and reverse is beta. If I apply capital X that is if I apply stress I generate strain and those are related through compliance and I go back I apply strain I generate stress that is related to through uh, the modulus or uh, you know the the stiffness right sorry stiffness C. I uh, will write it like this if I apply uh, you know so temperature I generate entropy and they are related as uh, C P by T and if I apply entropy and I generate temperature that is just the inverse of it right. So, because it is a scalar quantity that is C T by C P right. So, these are the different properties that we have seen. Now, let us look at uh, you know uh, these cross properties right. So, so these are the direct properties right. So, the epsilons, the betas, the C p's, the s, the c these are all you know they relate conjugate quantities. So, these are all direct 
uh, properties. Right. Now, let us look at properties which are uh, you know coupled cross coupled right. So, uh, so if I apply stress I generate polarization right. Now, what is the property there? The property there is uh, d i j right. So, that is the piezoelectric tensor right. So, this is the piezoelectric property piezoelectric right. Now, if I uh, apply, so I am applying some intensive quantity and getting to an extensive quantity. Okay, so if I apply E, I generate small x. Right now, that is what is called converse piezoelectric property, and I am just going to write that that is also D. Right, so D is piezoelectric. Tense a piezoelectric property, which is just do x by uh, sorry do uh, d by do x, right? So that's how you define it, or you know, so it is say, say same in magnitude as what is called the converse piezoelectric property, which is do small x by do e. That is, I generate strain by applying an electric field. So that's the d. Okay. Now, I can do the same exercise here, I apply temperature and then I get strain that is alpha or alpha is the uh, you know uh, you know coefficient of linear expansion or I apply stress and I generate entropy in the material and that also turns out to be alpha right. Now, uh, that is what is called you know or uh, you know so, so in magnitude that turns out to be alpha, but we call that what is called a piezo caloric effect. If I am generating entropy right, so whenever I generate entropy by applying stress since I am applying stress right, so do s by do x right, so that is my piezo caloric effect. Whenever I generate entropy, I call that a caloric effect, and since I am generating entropy because of stress, that is called piezo caloric effect. Okay. Now, you will see, I will prove later on that you know the piezo caloric effect, right, exactly has the same magnitude. Okay as the uh, uh, you know the, the coefficient of thermal expansion under certain conditions I will also tell you what those conditions are thermal expansion or in other words you know and similarly piezoelectric that is apply stress get displacement is the same as tensor is the same as converse piezoelectric effect which is apply uh, same in magnitude right. So, these things we are going to prove, prove later, prove soon right. So, we are going to prove all these things soon. So, here you apply electric field and measure strain ok. Then, uh, you know, so so in uh, okay. So let's go back, uh, and then let us look at this. So so then I apply temperature, right? So I I change the temperature, and I generate. Uh, you know, let me actually draw it more nicely. I will draw the temperature axis here. Okay, and S can go a bit on the top of that. So, that I do not get confused. Okay. So, and these things, right? So, here T by C P can be like this, and C P by T can be like that. Okay. So, now I can draw my other arrows also quite nicely. So, now I apply temperature and I generate displacement or I generate polarization by applying temperature. What property is this? 
So, I apply temperature and I generate polarization. So, this is uh, uh, dou d by dou t or dou p by dou t that is my pi or that is my actually uh, that is my pyroelectric effect right. Uh, pyroelectric effect which is I apply uh, you know I change the polarization by apply changing the temperature right uh, which is and the which is the same in magnitude. as what is the other cross coupled effect I am going to apply electric field and I am going to generate the uh, you know uh, entropy right. So, this is what is called electrocaloric effect ideally they should cross, but that is ok. So, this is what is called electrocaloric effect right. So, is same in magnitude as the electrocaloric effect because what is electrocaloric effect? I apply electric field and I change the entropy of the system right. So, that is the electrocaloric effect ok. So, these will be same in magnitude the magnitude will be pi which is the pyroelectric coefficient or actually it is minus pi ok. Uh, pi is actually defined as minus dou d by dou t. Anyway, so I look at the property right a, a cross coupled property what is its converse property right and you know. So, what are the magnitudes are they and signs right. So, are they equal or not right. So, if the property is uh, you know a piezo caloric effect sorry uh, let this be the converse property. If the property is coefficient of thermal expansion alpha converse property is piezo caloric effect right which is also alpha and the magnitudes are equal equal in magnitude equal right. So, magnitudes and signs both are equal ok. Now, if the property is you know so let me draw a nice table here if the property is uh, pyroelectric uh, effect pyroelectric property which is pi right uh, then you know the uh, the converse property is electrocaloric effect i am generating entropy by applying electric field so that is electrocaloric effect where that property is also I mean I am going to write E C E, but you know so E C E equal to pi electrocaloric effect is exactly it has the same magnitude as pi ok. Now, if the property is piezoelectric effect which means you know that is dou uh, d by I am generating polarization by applying stress the converse property is converse piezoelectric effect that does not have a specific name and uh, that is given as dou small x by dou e so, where small x is the strain e is the uh, you know the electric field. I am going to put some constraints here very soon right. So, but you know so for now you can just assume this to be dou x by dou e uh, and these are also equal in magnitude and sign both of them right all right. So, those are one set of coupled properties ok. Now, uh, the next set of coupled properties you know so, uh, I can just look at relation between just the intensive quantities or the extensive quantities right. So, for example, if I apply uh, let me draw it in a different color. So, I will change the color to something like pink ok. So, if I apply stress I generate an electric field ok. So, if I generate stress I generate an electric field and that is also another piezoelectric tensor called the E tensor right. Uh, so, what is E tensor uh, let me you know let me come back to this, but the E tensor is dou x uh, sorry I apply stress and I generate an electric field ok. So, I am not generating polarization if I generate polarization dou d by dou x is my d tensor, 
but do E by do x is my E tensor right. So, this is another piezoelectric property. Okay. So, typically in this course we will be using D as the piezoelectric tensor and we will be talking about do D by do x, but you will see that in MEMS community E is also something of interest because for you to be able to generate the stress waves right. So, so, so or I, I am not sure if it is do E by do x or do x by do E let me just check that and come back to you uh, uh, or this right. So, but for you to be able to generate uh, you know stress waves, so for generating stress waves one can use AC voltage right. So, if I have a MEMS device this is very useful in the area of MEMS where if I actuate a MEMS device just by applying an electric field that generates a stress wave and the stress wave is long range it can propagate into your you know other devices and other things. So, so you can generate stress waves like that I think this is do x by do e not the other way around. So, I have to change the direction here. So, it is this way ok uh, uh, all right. So, so I, I am generating stress waves ok through what is called piezoelectric activation. So, there E tensor matters actuation. So, I can easily apply you know so at these very small length scales right. So, at very small length scales I can easily apply electric field right. So, I can I can apply AC voltage I can make nice devices and apply AC voltage, but for them to convert into some sort of mechanical vibrations or for that to generate some sort of a stress wave right. Uh, you know you would need to use a piezoelectric device uh, and then you need to use you, you need to look at what is the E tensor of that piezoelectric device not the D tensor, but the E tensor ok. All right. So, that is E, uh, but you know so it turns out that I can uh, you know do the other way which is you know I, I apply strain and generate uh, I apply field and generate uh, stress here but here I can go the other way which is I apply strain and I generate polarization right. So, that is minus E that will turn out to be minus E ok. So, so the E tensor you know so the converse E tensor is nothing but apply you know uh, strain and generate polarization directly. Maybe I mean these things turn out to be related the E tensor, the D tensor etcetera will turn out to be related in the linear uh, regime, but you know so, so this is defined as a different tensor right. Now, if I look at the E tensor the piezoelectric E tensor which is defined as do uh, you know uh, I am generating stress by applying electric field right. Then I have a converse effect, converse piezoelectric converse effect of this. Here the magnitudes are equal, but opposite in sign. Okay. How do I know that I am going to prove all these things? This entire table that I am writing, I am going to prove it. Okay. Similarly, I can do the same thing with the uh, uh, E and T right. So, I I apply E or I change uh, sorry I apply E and I generate T or the other way around I apply T and generate E right that way or uh, you know. So, I, I, I charge the material and change the polar uh, change the entropy of the material right. So, these two coefficients they will be called I will call this uh, T and minus T right. So, this is plus t this is minus t right. So, uh, t is what is called the heat of polarization right. So, the property t which is I apply polarization or I apply charge and I generate entropy right. So, if I am generating entropy 
uh, by applying polarization you can call it caloric effect or you know so here I am doing it by polarization. So, in this case I will call it heat of polarization I am generating heat in the material polarization ok. So, this is also some sort of an electro caloric effect itself ok. Uh, where uh, that will exactly be same and uh, you know so uh, it will be inverse in uh, sorry it will be negative in magnitude of I apply temperature and I change the electric field in the device or I, I generate voltage in the device right. So, so directly uh, so, so these two will be related thermodynamically. So, they have you know so seemingly they have nothing in common right. So, here I am applying polarization and generating it and heating the material. Here I am applying temperature and generating electric field in the material right. So, seemingly these are different ideas however, you know so I am going to prove later uh, that you know these are exactly one and the same right. So, so these these ideas just because they are all related to equilibrium properties and some sort of thermodynamic potential they are one and the same right. So, that is my fifth property that I am going to write here Maybe this table is not enough for me. So, that is the T tensor and T is actually I apply uh, heat of polarization heat of polarization I apply uh, polarization which is the, the or displacement and I generate entropy ok. Uh, whereas, this will be minus T that is the converse effect and the converse effect is I apply temperature I change the temperature and I generate voltage or I generate electric field in the device right. So, these are also equal but opposite in sign ok. Then Finally, you know, so there is one more property that uh, I I will, you know, write on this side. Let's say, so the sixth property, right? And the sixth property is the other side of the triangle, which is, uh, you know, uh, I I change the temperature, I generate stress in the material, or I apply strain and I generate entropy, right? So now, if I am generating strain and I am generating entropy. Uh, what what would I call it uh, you know so so this is nothing but this is thermal stress ok. So, F will be heat of deformation right. So, so I am deforming the material by deforming the material I am uh, you know creating an entropy right. So, this will be minus F right. So, heat of deformation F for example, is heat of deformation. where whenever I generate entropy I either call it heat, heat is generating right or I call it a caloric property right. So, when the entropy is generated you know uh, for example, by changing an intensive quantity I call it a caloric property right. So, rho s by rho e is you know uh, electro caloric, rho s by uh, rho t is piezo caloric right. But whenever I, I do it by changing an extensive quantity. So, for example, here I am changing the charge to generate polarization. So, I call it heat sorry to I am changing the polarization or charge to generate uh, heat. So, this is called heat of polarization. Here I am changing the deformation or you know uh, strain right to generate entropy. So, this I call it as heat of deformation and heat of deformation is you know same in magnitude, but uh, you know a negative of uh, you know the thermal stress that is I apply temperature and I generate residual stress in the material right. So, if I do not let the material expand typically you know so when is thermal stress generated I have a material right I am changing the temperature of the material right. So, T is uh, being changed ok. Now, when T is being changed this material would like to expand ideally right, but I am clamping it right. So, I prevent expansion, clamp the material, then by virtue of clamping instead of generating strain what I am generating is residual stress, thermal stress ok. So, F determines how much stress am I generating by changing the temperature right so, or minus F ok. Now, uh, you know you can always see that F will be related to alpha ok. You can go home and try to prove that because it is a clamped mechanical boundary condition problem where if it is not clamped it would have extended as strain, 
but now you have a boundary condition where you are saying this material cannot strain it cannot expand in this direction. So, what will this strain convert into it will convert into residual stress right. So, so you can always you know so elastically relate the strain that is supposed to be there to stress that is generated ok. So, uh, uh, you know it is like you know so uh, uh, you are uh, you do not have freedom in your household let us say. So, you want to do something, but you are constrained you are not allowed to do something. So, what builds up in you is some sort of stress right. So, and then you want to you break down or you release it at some appropriate time and so on and so forth right. So, it is exactly something very similar to that ok. So, that is uh, that is an analogy that uh, I can think of ok all right. So, uh, these are you know so, so I have drawn this triangle where you know so, uh, th this triangle not only shows me uh, let me use the black pen the this triangle shows me both direct properties as well as coupled properties. Okay. And you know so, if I understand this triangle properly you know I, I know uh, you know so, if I am relating an intensive quantity to an extensive quantity. Uh, uh, you know by cross coupling uh, then uh, you know the converse properties will be exactly the same as uh, the uh, the uh, uh, the piezoelectric properties the converse properties and the direct properties are the same right. But if I am relating an intensive and an intensive property or an extensive and an extensive property the converse properties turn out to be negatives of the direct properties ok so and so on and so forth. So, that is the table that we have drawn and you know so all the various coupled properties are here right. So, I have defined what is heat of polarization, I have defined what is heat of deformation, I have defined what is piezocaloric effect, I have defined what is uh, you know uh, uh, electrocaloric effect, electrocaloric effect the converse property is nothing but pyroelectric effect uh, and then you know so heat of deformation the converse property will be thermal stress right and so on and so forth. Piezoelectric property the converse property is just piezoelectric converse piezoelectric property right. So, we will show very soon that they are actually all these in uh, you know converse and direct properties are related right. So, either they are equal or they have a uh, uh, negative relation with respect to each other ok. So, so that we have just stated it, but we will prove it soon ok. So, with that let us uh, you know come down to actually uh, you know writing down something about thermodynamics right. So, uh, so, if I am talking about thermodynamics first I talk about first law of thermodynamics actually I will just do thermodynamics of closed systems right. So, ideally I have to define what a system is, what a surrounding is, what is a closed system, what is an open system, what is uh, an isolated system, uh, but I would assume that you would have studied it in some other thermodynamics course. Uh, so, uh, by closed system what I mean is you know uh, uh, you know this system can exchange heat and work with the surroundings ok no mass exchange. right all right. So, now uh, so what is the first law of thermodynamics first law of thermodynamics states that d u equal to d q plus d w ok. So, the total internal energy in a system is uh, the heat you know taken in by the system heat uh, you know given to the system. plus you know work done on the system ok. So, how can I increase the total energy of the system I can increase the energy in two different ways one is I can heat the material right. So, I can supply heat to the material or secondly I can uh, supply work to the material right. So, or I can do some work on the material right. So, so both ways you know so both heat and work are different forms of the same energy right. So, so I am either heating the material and increasing its energy 
or I am uh, internal energy or I am supplying work and increasing its internal energy right. So, so, so I just split up you know. So, how do I change the internal energy of my system either by doing work on the system or either by heating the system ok. So, uh, I mean uh, so uh, fundamentally you know I do not want to go into differences between what is work and what is heat. But you know, so you can assume that work is some sort of a coherent energy transfer, to the system, which means if I have a piston, right? I uh, you know so so I apply force on the piston, right? So and then I transfer work into the gas molecules that are here, right? So so uh, so this is some sort of a coherent energy transfer from the force that you are applying to the system right. So, to the gas molecules of the system ok uh, and heat is some kind of an incoherent energy transfer which is some sort of noisy energy right. So, so the energy is being transferred, but not in any form of uh, uh, you know not, not in a very coherent way right. So, so the piston will not uh, have a have a coordinated motion because of uh, the force that I am applying uh, if I am supplying heat energy the piston will just vibrate right. Uh, so, all the molecules on the piston are just vibrating right. So, uh, so, so uh, you know so, so that is the incoherent energy transfer to the system ok. So, that is why we separate out you know so typically first law of thermodynamics again this is not a thermodynamics course. So, I am not going to go into details of this, but we separate out what work is and what heat is right. So, so these are two different forms of uh, you know energy one is just uh, energy transfer essentially I am not going to talk about absolute energy I am going to say how can a system change its internal energy the system has some energy now I want it to change its internal energy how can it do it I can either supply heat to the system or I can do work on the system and this work can be you know mechanical work electrical work uh, right. So, D w can be mechanical in nature it can be electrical in nature right. Uh, it can be uh, you know uh, so magnetic in nature right and so on and so forth. So, you have so many forms of work right. So, electrical, magnetic, mechanical etcetera ok. All right. So, uh, finally, let us actually uh, you know so, so I am going to invoke also the second law of thermodynamics which defines what entropy is, but you know so, so it is going to tell me that uh, you know change in entropy is nothing but you know d q or del q by t right. So, if I have a reverse if I have you know uh, uh, what is called quasi static heat transfer. I can always write d s as d q by t or uh, ok. So, let me write it appropriately. So, it is not d q plus d w, but I am just going to write it as del q plus del w right. So, change in work I am going to say del q and sorry heat I am going to say del q and change in work I am going to say del w ok. So, del q by t ok. Uh, so, so this is reversible heat. Uh, okay, so so there is a reason why I use del. I think you all would have studied in some sort of thermodynamics course. This is a path dependent functions. The q's and w's are path dependent functions, whereas right q and w are path dependent. Whereas s is a state function. So differentials of q's and w's. I'm just going to use del q and del w. Whereas, differentials of state functions I am going to use d s because there is a, a proper differential to these functions right. So, so whichever path I follow I can define uh, you know uh, a clear change in d s which is not path dependent right. So, this is not path dependent ok. So, these ideas are there in thermodynamics and I am sure you know uh, uh, you may have done some courses in thermodynamics where you have studied these ideas even basic 12 standard thermodynamics would 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 tell you about these things ok. So, so if not you can just go and refer to a book on thermodynamics ok. So, because of that you know so because of the combining first law and second law
I am going to write now d u equal to d q plus d w or del q plus del w, but I am going to write it as you know del q is T d s right. Now, del w right. So, del w can be my mechanical work right. So, what is mechanical work? It is sigma d uh, sorry uh, sigma is the stress okay stress d x stress time straight right or it is going to be this is the mechanical work in pistons and systems like that you wrote it as p d v right. So, p for pressure v for volume, but pressure is related to stress volume is related to strain right. So, volume expansion change in volume is nothing but your volumetrically straining the material. So, this is a more generic form of mechanical energy generic form of mechanical work ok. And then you know so, so the other way of doing work on the system is by applying uh, you know so, so E. So, if I apply uh, some charge on the capacitor you know so I store energy in the form of E d d right. So, if I apply differential charge right. So, I have a capacitor with some parallel plates and I have a dielectric here. I apply some differential charge d d then you know I increase I generate E because of d d I generate E right. And the capacitor stores an extra energy of E d d right. So, I have done some coherent work on the capacitor by applying an uh, a charge right. So, or I can apply an electric field and uh, you know uh, charge the capacitor that is also possible ok. So, now ok. So, because of these I have written now the first law of thermodynamics to be d u equal to you know. So, uh, uh, T d s right intensive extensive plus uh, x d x intensive extensive this is i this is e, e i for intensive e for extensive this is i this is e plus e again intensive d d this is extensive right. So, so that is how the internal energy which is you know defined from first and second law of thermodynamics splits out as ok. So, so I am I am going to use this form for internal energy. Now, this is one of my thermodynamic potentials I was telling you that just like a spring mass system has a potential right. So, my internal energy which is exactly the same potential right. So, uh, is one of the pot those potentials. So, that thermodynamic potentials just like a spring mass potential u ok. Uh, and you know so, so the way I am writing it if you see s is not really entropy, but it is entropy per unit volume. Uh, you know x is also you know volumetric strain delta v per unit volume and so on and so forth. So, uh, even my u that I am writing is actually internal energy per unit volume right. So, so these are all volume normalized energy scales energies ok. So, the unit of this will be joule per uh, meter cube or joule per volume ok alright. So, that is our first potential. Uh, so, uh, so I will conclude the class here. Uh, so, tomorrow we will write more thermodynamic potentials and then see uh, how our properties emerge as a function of you know. Uh, so, so, so all these thermodynamic potentials you know how they change uh, when I change the uh, you know. So, so here this is the cause right. So, the extensive the way I wrote u right. So, I can change u by changing entropy, I can change u by changing deformation, I can change u by changing the charge right. So, the cause is either s or x or d in this case right. Uh, and so, you know so, so I am going to look at uh, you know how these thermodynamic potentials uh, change as a function of the cause right. So, uh, right and then I look at the double derivatives of that and I see if a property emerges right. So, so just like I have I have shown you that a spring constant is nothing but a double derivative of potential with respect to displacement. Uh, so, we are going to derive the uh, some thermodynamic properties which are which are just double derivatives or curvatures at equilibrium right uh, of various uh, uh, you know cause and effect uh, energy and uh, with respect to the cause ok. So, so I am I'm, I'm going to define more thermodynamic functions uh, for, uh, energy uh, thermodynamic potentials which are like my spring mass potential right. So, the first one I have defined is here it is the d u ok. 
All right. So, let us uh, assemble again in the next class. Thank you very much.